Hello, welcome to episode 103 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 13th of February. So welcome everybody, hope you all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you. And I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today we have some knitting, a little bit of sewing, um, some confession. Two questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and some information on my shop update, which is Friday the 14th of February at 7pm GMT. Um, and I have a new bag design to show you, so I'm excited to show you that. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic. And I have my own website, crafthousemagic.co.uk, where you can find show notes for the podcast. But also my um, online shop where I sell my hand-dyed yarn, handmade project bags, stitch markers, progress keepers and higher, higher knitting, knitting needles. Um, so we have two make-alongs going on at the moment. We have the Retro Mal, which is going on in the Ravelry group right until the end of March. So you have plenty of time to join in. And it's anything retro in any type of craft you'd like to share. And uh, tenuous links are very welcome. So come and join in there. And we have a lovely set of yarns that I was given us a prize for the podcast from Jen from Castleview Yarns. And they are absolutely beautiful. So Jen has her own website and she is castleviewyarns.com which you should be able to see there um, and she's got some beautiful colourways so these are two of the colourways that she has in her shop. This top one is called Fear of the Dark and this bottom one is called Frozen Fractals which I guess is a Frozen reference. <laughs> they are beautiful Jen, thank you so much. And there'll be prizes for the retro mail. And they'll also come with some beautiful progress keepers as well that she's made. Gorgeous little hearts. So thank you so much, Jen. Um, so I will be drawing for prizes in the retro mail at the end of the... Um, well, it'll be just after the end of March. Um, and you don't have to actually finish anything. So come and join in the Ravelry group. And you could win one of Jen's lovely yarns. Um, I will leave a link to Jen's website in the show notes as well um, and that's on my website crafthousemagic.co.uk We have another knit along going on in the Ravelry group but also on Instagram as well and that's for the right around the corner shawl um, and I finished mine a couple of weeks ago just because I was desperate to get it and wear it really because it's a really nice pattern um, it's a triangular shawl and it's got some really nice tassels at the end so I think really finish it off nicely um, so that's going on in the Ravelry group but also on Instagram if you're doing it on Instagram if you use the hashtag right around the corner shawl C-H-M-K-A-L I'll be able to see you um, what you've been making and how you're getting on with it so don't forget to use the hashtag and then you can also um, click on the hashtag and see what everyone else has been up to as well so that's the make-alongs we've got running at the moment and I better get on to the good stuff the knitting so first of all I have two finished objects can you believe it <laughs> I have had five pairs of socks on the needles for quite some time and I thought I need to get some of these off the needles so I picked this pair up again and finished them off so this is my country garden sock pattern um, and the pattern is inspired by country gardens and these little butterfly shapes are supposed to represent butterflies flying around in the garden and the trellis is the sort of top of the fence um, in a lovely country garden as well and it's supposed to be like little grass as well so the butterflies are flying over the grass um, and over the fence there so that's what the pattern was designed to sort of show and this pair is knitted in my I'll be there for you colourway um, and this contrast I've used is the normal contrast that I um, sell with my yarn um, in the shop so that's I'll be there for you colourway I love these actually I really need to start wearing them straight away I don't know why I forgot about them really I just keep starting new projects and not finish them finishing ones off that I've already done so I love the way um, it's like a pale purple tones with different speckles of different pinks and purples in there as well just nice and subtle so I finish those off I haven't blocked them properly yet I've just had them on the blocking wires without wetting them so they'll probably neaten up a little bit and I've also finished my candy cane socks finally 
<laughs> so they've got um, a row of candy canes all the way down the foot and they, that's on both sides there um, and then the other sides of the socks are sort of plain um, the candy cane socks pattern that I've designed is available on Ravelry and on my website as well but I've also designed this colourway to go specifically with, with it and it's called Jingle Bell Rock um, and I've put contrast toes in there and heels because um, I think that looks really Christmassy really. So um, I've used the Stellina based on here because I thought well you can't get any more Christmassy than having a little bit of Selena in your life. <laughs> So those are finished and I'll be able to save those till next Christmas now. I found that I was trying to knit them just before Christmas and I can never get loads of stuff done. It always gets left and left till after Christmas so always best to find finish things in the new year um, ready for next Christmas. So that's the two finished objects I have to show you and I have a couple of things on the needles I've got to show you as well. So I have been working on my Adventina shawl um, and this is the Advent mini project that I started just before Christmas. Um, it took me a while to decide what pattern I was going to use for my Advent minis but I finally decided on this one. It's like a wrap shape and it's a, a long... Um, sort of zigzag pattern and I've been using um, just the garter stitch rows really and then I've just the there are some lacy bits but I've ignored them because I need a nice easy <laughs> garter stitch pattern and that's how I've how much I've done since last week where the stitch markers are or progress keepers I should say um, and I'm getting on to the sort of blues and greens now so it's there was a sort of a purpley bit and now I'm getting on to blues and greens then this colour that I'm working on at the moment is a gorgeous bluey green yarn that I picked up from fondant fibre ages ago I think actually this might have been one of the 12 days of Christmas that I had a couple of years ago from there um, so that's how I've got on with this one so far I'm now about two metres long <laughs> It's getting rather long and I still have quite a few minis that I set aside to go in here so I'll show you how many I've got to do left. So I've been storing them in a, a plastic um, egg box and those six are the last ones to go in um, and they're my favourites I think. Lovely delicate bluey greens, gorgeous. <laughs> so those are ready and waiting to go in the shawl or wrap I should say. The pattern is again it's called the Adventina shawl or wrap. I keep saying shawl I'm sure it says wrap in the pattern and it's by um, Katrin Schubert um, and I can't wait to finish that and wear it. So that's project one that I've been working on. I have also been working on my cardigan which is going to be well the pattern is a sweater um, it's called the Gwanwin sweater but I'm going to convert it into a cardigan just to make it a bit more wearable for me and it's by Verena Kors um, sorry the picture's black and white but I will pop a colour one on there as well so you can see what it looks like a little bit better beautiful lacy section at the top there um, and I'm just adding um, a few um, like six stitches of just plain knit just in the front there so that I can steek it afterwards and have it as a cardi. Unfortunately I made some miscalculations <laughs> so this is how I'd sort of got on before I decided I realised that I'd actually made a mistake so I've um, done some of the lacy bits there but then I realised that I hadn't made sure that I'd got a mirror image of the pattern at the front here. Um, so I sort of dropped down some of the plain stitches and um, re-knitted them in pattern. And I just thought that there's actually not going to be enough room um, just having a couple of purl stitches between the two um, panels or to the two sides of the yoke there before I'm going to cut it down the middle. So I'm going to rip it out. But I couldn't face ripping it out <laughs> for a couple of days. So I've left it. Um, I am going to undo it tonight and start again and hopefully make good headway on, um, on the yoke for this jumper because I want it um, to get to the stage where I get past all the hard bits and I can just have a nice relaxing knit and then it'll be quickly finished and I can wear it 
so I'm excited to wear that as well. The yarn that I'm using is my Purple Haze colourway on my um, Merino DK base. Um, I've had caked up for absolutely ages to do this project, but <laughs> at least I've started now. So that's what I've been working on, but I thought I'd show you how Adam's been getting on with his hat that he was knitting. So he's been knitting the sock head hat, um, and I don't know whether you remember me showing you that I'd knitted some of the rib. I think I knitted um, the rib from there to there because he really wasn't getting on with 2 by 2 rib. He prefers just knitting, he says. So I gave him a sort of a leg up by knitting um, the rib in for him just to finish it off. But he's actually done quite a lot. So he's done that much. I measured it and it comes to two inches. Um, so the yarn that he's using is some lovely yarn that Peggy gifted him and it's called Scribbles and Knits Fibres and the colourway is on a different piece of paper in here somewhere. So it's called Light Speed and there's a lovely little explanation on the little card there. I thought that was really nice. So that's the sock head hat that Adam's knitting and it's so neat because he is so tight. <laughs> but he's getting on with it slowly so that's always good. So that's what Adam's been up to. Um, I think that's all my knitting, but I have been doing a little bit of sewing. So in terms of my sewing, I've been making some sanitary towels again. So I think it was episode 85 where I previously showed um, a design that I drafted um, from a single use sanitary towel and I'd just drawn around it to get the pattern and I'd been using those to see if I liked them and what improvements I could make. So I decided actually that the ones that I'd made before they didn't have a wide enough um, sort of grip to go around in my underwear so I made the side bits a little bit wider and put two press studs on so that they'll hold a bit better so they pop around the back. So if you want to know a bit in a bit more detail about how I made these, if you pop to episode 85, and I've also linked in um, the show notes for that podcast all the links of the different places um, where I found videos of how to make them. But basically the technique that I used is I used um, a piece of fleece for the backing, um, and then I cut some zorb um, in the sort of shape of the main body of the sanitary towel and I zigzag stitched that to the fleece backing and then I put right sides together um, so the side that didn't have the zorb on um, facing the floral fabric I stitched right around the edge leaving a gap to turn it and then turned it the right way pressed it in place and just top stitched it all the way around and then I've just added the press studs so they're really nice and easy to make and I used um, all stuff that I'd had lying around apart from the Zorb of course so the Zorb is a really absorbent wadding material to go inside and I have found that these are actually more comfortable than using um, one use single use sanitary towels that I've bought from the shop so I've made two sizes so this was based on a panty liner sort of size and this was based on one of the longer ones that I picked up one of the body form um, towels that I preferred uh, um, out of the, the single use ones and just made it on the same principle and I just used some um, pink and red fabrics there um, so I'm just trying to make reusable things so that I don't have as many single use sort of plastics and materials um, that just go in landfill really so just trying to do my bit really it might seem a little bit gross having a reusable sanitary towel but um, if you think about it and look into the ways of um, how people store them and wash them it's actually not as bad as you think I was a little bit freaked out to start with <laughs> and I did notice that I had about eight thumbs down on episode 85 which I think is to do with the mentioning sanitary towels but I think it's important to try and um, do my bit to try and recycle things and not have so many single use um, items that are going to go into landfill so that's my sewing bit. I have been cutting out a couple of dressmaking patterns and adjusting them. I haven't quite got round to making anything up or cutting anything out yet in the fabric. Um, so hopefully get time to do that this weekend. So I almost forgot to show you that I've got my Tobin sweater on. So if I stand back a bit you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So 
so this is a cashmere pattern um, and I basically followed the pattern as it is apart from the sleeve length and uh, I did pick different sizes for my bust and hip measurement compared to the shoulders but um, I talked a bit more in detail about it on episode 101 if you're interested where Barbara was wearing it but it is very very warm around the neck with this um, cowl part here but um, I think if it gets really cold it'll be really nice and warm um, but there we go so I have some confessions to show you the first one of which is sewing related and it is the Tilly and the Buttons make it simple book so I pre-ordered this from Tilly and the Buttons so I got a sticker sheet free I don't know what I've done with it now I think I've put it somewhere safe but it's got some sewing related stickers on there I don't know what I'm going to do with them but, <laughs> but there you go I did feel that if I ordered it directly from Tilly and the Buttons I was sort of more directly supporting a small business rather than ordering it on Amazon etc so it came a few days ago and I'm very excited to get on with some of these projects so I shall show you this page at the back which shows I think all of the patterns on one page if I can find it again here we go so there's quite a few things to make in here I want to do this cardigan for a start and also some of these pajamas I think that these would be fun um, I do like these other patterns as well but I don't think that they'd necessarily suit me this sort of um, dungarees sort of pattern really looks nice but I think that might accentuate my um, tummy <laughs> and I love this little play suit type of thing here but I'm um, not sure about that again but definitely I'm going to have a go at that cardigan and the pyjamas at some point I shall show you a better picture of the cardigan that I'm interested in making um, again I should have put a bookmark in here so I could find it a little easier but there we go I'm not very organized today this is the cardigan in one color which I think is really nice but there's also a picture of um, one that's been block color blocked as well I think it's a little bit later on which looks like fun I don't know if I'd necessarily put these colours in the place that they are um, but I like the idea of colour blocking on this cardigan it's a sort of bat winged one so um, I would definitely suggest this for beginners they're very simple patterns and I think Tilly and the Buttons are brilliant at breaking down the steps making it really easy for beginners to understand uh, what to do for each thing and there are sections where it tells you how to break down um, making a project so that if you've got sort of a spare hour or half an hour you can fit it into a busy working week really um, love it so far so I'm going to try and see if I can get that cardigan made as soon as possible and I can sort of give you a bit more a bit more of a review of actual making the patterns there are some actual there are some paint, paper patterns in the back here, pattern sheets, so that um, I don't have to print it out. I can just trace it off those. Um, so that should be fun. So I have another confession, but it's not naughty because I was gifted it. So my friend Jo sent me a lovely little progress keeper from a shop called Otter and Spell. And it's an Etsy shop run by a lady called Vicky. Um, she also has an Instagram account as well that you can follow her on. But I'll leave links in the show notes. But isn't this gorgeous? It's like an owl carrying a letter inspired by Harry Potter. How cool. Really gorgeous. Thank you so much, Joe. I'm really excited to use that. Isn't that sweet? So I just have two questions from the Ask Me Anything thread and then I'll get into the shop update information. So um, Pink Perla on Ravelry asked me whether there was much of a difference between the two types of fingering weight yarn when you've got either 400 or 425 metres per 100 grams um, in a skein when you're knitting something. So in terms of socks, I tend to use the same needle size um, with those both those types of yarn and I get pretty much the same gauge, I think. Um, I think if you've got more than 25 metres difference, um, you might have 
a, a difference in thickness there and you might end up having a different size of sock and it might not fit you but I think those 25 meters it makes very little difference there might be a slight difference in terms of um, the density of the fabric the way that the actual fabric looks when you've knitted it up but of course I think that um, needle size has much more of an effect um, and also your tension in your knitting has more of an effect as well so I don't think that there's much of a difference between yarn that's 400 and 425 meters per 100 grams um, so fingering weight yarn does vary quite a bit and I actually in my shop I have a BFL base which is 365 meters per 100 grams so it's quite a bit thicker um, so I find that I need to go up a needle size and use less stitches so they're quicker <laughs> So I tend to use uh, 56 stitches on a 2.75 millimetre needle um, with my BFL base, the fingering weight BFL base, um, because it's so much plumper, the yarn, um, and I enjoy it when it's slightly thicker sometimes. Um, so there we go. It does, I think it's worth uh, making sure that you do a little swatch or start in a project and just keeping an eye on um, how it's coming out and then you can always rip it out and start again. So I hope that helps Pink Perla. Thank you so much for your question. So the next question, um, oh, I didn't write down who it was from, but um, somebody was asking on um, the Ravelry group how Adam and I met. So Adam and I met online dating. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd moved to Norwich um, and I didn't know many people so I thought well I'll go on the online dating site and see if I can meet a partner <laughs> and I met quite a few people I thought oh dear this is not going to work <laughs> and I thought I'll just meet this last person because I've had enough and then Adam turned out to be wonderful so that was really good we went ice skating on our first date and I'm rubbish at ice skating and he thought I didn't like him because I was so nervous and I was thought I was going to fall over <laughs> but it was all right it turned out right in the end and now we've been together I think we've been together 11 years isn't that crazy oh dear uh, so thank you so much for your question um don't forget if you have any questions you, that you think you might want me to answer on the podcast or just um, as a written reply go over to the Ravelry group and there's an ask me anything thread on there so last of all I just have some stuff to show you which is going on my shop update which is Friday the 14th of February at 7 p.m. GMT and I have a new bag design to show you so this is my hair bag so it's an appliqued hair on the front and then I've done some free motion stitching um, to highlight some details of sort of the legs and the eyes and a grassy area and it's under the, a moonlit sky and you can just see where I've done some free motion stitching to sort of highlight where the clouds are so that's the front of the bag and this is the drawstring version and I have on the back I've then printed a hair and done my crafthousemagic.co.uk free motion on the back as well um, so there we go that's my the drawstring version I shall show you it drawn up when you first have my bag sometimes you need to give it a good old um, tug to start with once it's been um when it's just been delivered because it just is a little bit stiff to start with but once you've done that a few times it um it draws together really nicely so that's the drawstring version but i also have a zipped version here so there's just a zip across the front it's exactly the same um, and then inside you've got some cream lining with two nice big pockets inside there um to put all your bits and bobs in so the front has the hair on and then on the back I've done the printed hair and this has got some it's some shiny um, fabric paint that I've used there and again I have the craft house magic free motion stitched on the back as well so you've got a choice of the two different versions um, Normally I actually only really show the drawstring one on the website but this time I've made sure that I've made one of each um, to photograph so that you can see it um, 
what your choice is really so with my free motioned um, bags I only tend to do the medium size um, whereas where I've done when I've got a print fabric all over I do a larger as well and I'm thinking about maybe doing a smaller size just in the ones that have print so obviously I've laid this out so it has a nice balanced um, applique on the front of it if I did it on a smaller or a larger bag it wouldn't work as well so there we go I also have accessories for these so, so if you order a bag it will come with one of these little pouches with lavender in um, to match um, that comes with the bag as well um, but then I have these other accessories to show you so I have a circular needle case and I have a video that shows you how you use these um, and I will link it on the top here if you wanted to look at that so that's for a circular needles so that it doesn't um, hurt your knitting I have a notions pouch and if I open this out you'll be able to see it a little bit better um, so there's a big um, area at the bottom this is a squared bottom notions pouch with a hair on as well and this is the the smaller things have got the printed um, hairs on rather than the applique so that's got a printed hair on made with that same um, shiny fabric paint I have a DPN case to match as well and there and also last but not least I have a scissor case and the scissor case at the front looks bare but I've managed to get the hair um, to fit on the back there so you can choose to have the scissors included or not um, whether you've already got some scissors already so there we go that's all my new hair design um, that will be in the shop tomorrow but I will also have some new yarn colourways but they're not dry yet so I'm not going to show you on the podcast today um, but I will be posting tomorrow morning on my Instagram account the colourways that I'll have um, in shop update and tomorrow evening so that you can actually see them um, before the shop update goes live um, so don't forget to follow me on Instagram I'm craft house magic there as well I'm also thinking about um, relisting the B free motion bags um, but with white lining instead because I've run out of the B fabric that goes inside um, so I'll pop a picture up there so you can tell what I'm talking about um, but they'll have a whole set of the B things as well um, and originally I'd just done the notions pouches and um, scissor cases etc in the B print fabric but I'm going to do the same as I have done here and print the B on the side um, so that it ties in um, with the bag design a little bit better so there we go so thank you so much for sticking to the very end um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more and I shall see you in the next podcast bye